This passage is adapted from Oliver Morton, Eating the Sun, How Plants Power the Planet. Phytoplankton are photosynthesizing microscopic organisms that live near the surface of oceans and lakes. Carbon dioxide levels during ice ages vary with the extent of the ice, amplifying all the other changes. One of the reasons for this seems to be a fertilization of the open oceans brought about by the dryness and the receding seas. Various places in the ocean offer abundant nitrate and phosphate, but no phytoplankton. In the 1930s, a Norwegian oceanographer named Haken Hasberg Gran suggested that the phytoplankton were absent because there wasn't enough iron to support them. Iron crops up all through the biochemistry of photosynthesis, but unfortunately, because the levels of iron involved are indeed low and ocean research ships are made of iron, measuring iron levels with enough precision to prove Grant's hypothesis was hard. In the 1980s, the problem was rendered more graphic by brilliantly processed satellite images, which used the spectral measurements that picked up the wavelengths associated with chlorophyll and extremely careful modeling of the behavior of light as it entered and left the oceans to produce pictures which showed where in the oceans there was the most chlorophyll and thus where the photosynthesis was going on. Combined with maps of nitrate and phosphate, these remarkable pictures made the high nutrient, low chlorophyll areas graphically apparent. And at the same time, an ebullient American oceanographer named John Martin made use of ultra clean techniques to get accurate measurements of iron levels in the dead zones. Iron deficiency was indeed a factor and Martin went on to suggest that it might explain ice age changes in ocean productivity. The key to his insight was that the ice ages were also dry. The major source of iron to the mid oceans is dust from the continents the tropical North Atlantic is more productive than the southern part of the same ocean because of dust from the Sahara. Martin suggested that the increased amount of dust blown from the drier continents in the ice ages would have made various parts of the ocean more productive. The effect would be particularly marked, he thought, in the southern oceans where the level of unused nutrients is currently quite high and where the dust supply might have been particularly abundant. South America takes on quite a different shape in the ice ages. The coastal shelf to the east becomes an extension of Patagonia. Had there been any ice age Argentinians, they could have walked to the Falklands Islands. Iron bearing dust from these new plains would enrich the sea all around Antarctica. The rate at which the phytoplankton photosynthesized would increase and that increase in photosynthetic activity would draw down carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Thus, a change in sea level produced by the growth of ice caps in Canada and Scandinavia would lead to a change in the carbon dioxide level all around the world. And the dust only had to contain a very small amount of iron to work its magic, 100,000 tons or so. Give me a couple of tankers full of iron fillings, Martin used to say, and I'll give you an ice age. Biogeochemist Andrew Watson has since taken part in various experiments designed to test the iron fertilization hypothesis. These experiments, which involve setting to sea in a research vessel, dumping carefully prepared iron overboard, and measuring what happens next in as many ways as possible, have proved Martin at least partly right, though sadly he died before the results were in. In the most thorough of them in 1999, the careful application of a few tons of iron to the ocean south of New Zealand produced a bloom of phytoplankton nicely visible from space, a great curling comma of chlorophyll that went on to grace the cover of the journal Nature. Meanwhile, a less controlled and less well-documented but rather more dramatic experiment on the same effect has been going on in the North Pacific, in parts of China, millions of tons of topsoil are being dried out and lost to the wind every year, a natural phenomenon exacerbated by overgrazing and the diversion of water to farmlands. Quite a lot of that topsoil ends up in the ocean. The iron supplied by increasing flows of dust over the past decades has been making vast stretches of the ocean north of Hawaii measurably more productive.
The primary purpose of the passage is to consider some competing explanations for a natural phenomenon, discuss a progression of evidence that addresses a long-standing scientific issue, describe how a theory has been refined in light of unexpected observations, propose a hypothesis that would resolve an ongoing scientific controversy. So this is B, right? Because the passage does include a progression of evidence related to iron fertilization. So if you look at the passage, the way it starts by talking about what happened in the 1930s when Gran uh, suggested that the phytoplankton were absent because there wasn't enough iron to support them. And then uh, in the 1980s, the problem was rendered more graphic because of satellite imagery. And that is when uh, we speak of Martin, John Martin, who basically said that, you know, uh, the ice age changes in ocean productivity could be explained by iron. And then you have the next stage. So this is all Martin. And then you have Andrew Watson, right, who has also conducted experiments. So there is a detailing of evidence, one after the other, that addresses the issue of ice age and how carbon dioxide is captured during the ice age by phytoplankton and whether iron plays a role there, right? So I don't think competing explanations are presented here. Uh, the only explanation for which successive evidence is brought out is the iron fertilization theory. Um, I don't think the theory has been refined in light of unexpected observations. These observations were not unexpected. In fact, there's a sense of deliberate science going into each of the experiments described, right from Grand to Martin to the last one, right? So the theory has been refined. The theory has been understood better, but there's a sense of deliberate action. And I don't think this is a hypothesis that is being proposed, right? This is something that has already been studied for a fair amount of time, which is why the progression of evidence option is the best. According to the passage, Grant's idea about iron was primarily intended to explain the lack of certain organisms in some apparently nutrient-rich areas, relative dryness of most land masses during Ice Age, atypical biochemistry of certain phytoplankton species, variations in carbon dioxide levels during ice ages. So this is A, right? Because if you go back and look at what Grant studied, Yes, here. So let's read from here. A Norwegian oceanographer named Grant suggested that the phytoplankton were absent because there wasn't enough iron to support them. So because of the absence of iron, and iron is important because it crops up all through the biochemistry of photosynthesis, because of the absence of iron, there was no presence of phytoplankton. So that is what A says, that phytoplankton's lack could be an outcome of the lack of iron. Okay, the relative dryness of land masses, that is something that came later. That is something that Martin spoke about. So it's not B. Um, the biochemistry of phytoplankton species is not atypical. In fact, biochemistry of photosynthesis in general requires iron, so not C. And variations in carbon dioxide levels during ice ages, this again was not something that Grant was looking at when he looked at the absence of phytoplankton. So E. As used in line 12, support most nearly means. So let's look at that. Here, right? There wasn't enough iron to support them, enough iron to support the phytoplankton. So this would be uh, maintain, right? There wasn't enough iron to maintain a presence of phytoplankton. To bolster is to uh, support in the sense of to bolster an argument, right? So this evidence will support your argument. So that's bolster. Endure is to be able to go through something that is not pleasant. So again, that doesn't uh, fit the context of uh, iron supporting phytoplankton. And encourage is also used in a more abstract concept of, you know, kind of encouraging someone, um, giving them a boost. So that also doesn't fit the context. 
The passage suggests that Martin's techniques in 34 to 39 allowed him to overcome which impediment that previous researchers had encountered when trying to evaluate Grant's idea. So what is Martin doing in 34 to 39? Uh, yeah, this part. At the same time, an ebullient American oceanographer made use of ultra clean techniques to get accurate measures of iron levels in the dead zones. So he used ultra clean techniques to get accurate measurements of iron levels, right? This was something that hadn't been done earlier. So let's look at the options. Equipment used in conducting the research could influence the data. Technology required to process the collected data did not yet exist. The locations expected to yield relevant data were largely inaccessible. Variations in pertinent data did not seem to follow any clear pattern. So this is A, right? Because we know that uh, a problem with verifying what Gran was saying was um, Yeah, the ocean research ships were made of iron, right? And that is why the equipment itself being made of iron made measuring iron levels with precision difficult, right? So this is where the equipment that uh, Martin used, the suggestion is that that equipment was clean in the sense that it was not made of iron and therefore it would not affect the outcome of the research. So this would be line um, 17 to... Uh, something, 17 to 19 or something as evidence. Yeah, 14 to 19. So let's just go through that again, but unfortunately and hard. So, but unfortunately, because the level of ions involved are indeed low and ocean research ships are made of iron, right? So this, as we said, is the equipment bit. Technology required to process the collected data? No, nobody is saying that the collected data could not be processed. The authenticity of the data itself was in question because the ships were made of iron. The locations expected to yield the data were not inaccessible. Uh, even before Martin, they were accessible. And uh, the variations in data also relates to the data, while what we are saying here is that Martin was able to collect clean data. So A. According to the passage, Martin thought that ice age ocean productivity differed from present ocean productivity because of the higher levels of nitrate and phosphate in the oceans during an ice age, greater amounts of dust being deposited in the oceans during an ice age, increased concentrations of atmospheric carbon dioxide during an ice age, and more southerly position of South America during an ice age. Is this evidence-based? No. Okay. So this is B, right? We know that the greater amount of dust being deposited in the oceans led to higher productivity. That's what Martin said. Uh, Martin suggested that the increased amount of dust blown from the drier continents in the ice ages would have made various parts of the ocean more productive, right? So this is related to the greater amount of dust blown from the drier continents. And that is exactly what option B is saying. Uh, so higher levels of nitrate and phosphate is not pertinent to capture of carbon dioxide. So that is not A. Increased concentrations of atmospheric carbon dioxide. No, in fact, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels decrease during an ice age, which is why an ice age happens because there's no greenhouse effect. And more southerly position of South America during an ice age. Um, is that relevant? Let's just look at what he was talking about in reference to this. South America takes on quite a different shape in the ice ages. Right. So that's just talking about the shape, I think. It's not so much the position as the shape. Yeah. So D is not relevant. As used in line 53, marked most nearly means. So let's look at... 53, marked. Yeah, the effect would be particularly marked in the Southern Oceans where the level of unused nutrients is currently quite high and uh, where the dust supply might have been particularly abundant. 
So the effect would be particularly marked. So this would be B, the effect would be particularly pronounced. It would be particularly noticeable in the South, right? Blemished is related to blemishes, which are like scars. So that doesn't fit the context. Isolated is to do with isolation, loneliness, doesn't fit the context. And inscribed is when something is written on stone or something is literally marked, right? Not the effect being marked is what we are saying. So not D. The author includes the information about Watson's research mainly to provide an example of the kind of findings that Martin's hypothesis was intended to explain. Explain how Martin's hypothesis has been revised in response to new data. Show that an important part of Martin's hypothesis has been substantiated. Identify a significant limitation on the scope of Martin's hypothesis. So this would be C, right? Because if you go back and read Watson's experiment, it says here that uh, Watson actually made the effort to run these experiments to test the iron fertilization hypothesis. These experiments, which involve setting to sea in a research vessel, dumping carefully prepared iron overboard and measuring what happens next, have proved Martin at least partly right, though sadly he died before the results were in. So a part of his iron fertilization theory has been proved right by Watson's experiment, right? Option A, provide an example of the kind of findings that Martin's hypothesis was intended to explain. These are not findings. These are controlled experiments that Watson did. So not A. Uh, Martin's hypothesis has not been revised. In fact, what Watson did showed that a good part of Martin's hypothesis was correct. And a significant limitation on the scope of Martin's hypothesis is not what Watson's experiment brought out. It's C. The passage most strongly suggests that certain agricultural practices in China have raised the volume of river water flowing into the Pacific, compensated to some extent for natural processes of soil erosion, been studied extensively in an effort to further Martin's research, increased chlorophyll levels in part of the Pacific Ocean. So this should be D because you have all of this nutrient rich material coming into the ocean. But let's just work with the evidence. 94, 98, uh, meanwhile, Pacific, in parts, farmlands. Okay, meanwhile, Pacific, in parts, uh, farmlands. And then you have a uh, quiet ocean, iron productive. Quiet ocean and iron productive. Okay, so here you are saying that a less controlled and less well documented but more dramatic experiment on the same effect has been going on. So this is just introducing the experiment. In parts of China, millions of tons of topsoil are being dried out and lost to the wind every year, a natural phenomenon exacerbated by overgrazing and the diversion of water. Quite a lot of that topsoil ends up in the ocean. The iron supplied by increasing flows of dust over the past decades has been making vast stretches of the ocean measurably more productive. So it's the D part, the final line, which says that all of this iron that comes into the ocean because of this topsoil flowing into the ocean, that would increase the volume of phytoplankton growing in the ocean and in turn increase the chlorophyll levels, right? So D is the best answer. This is not meant to indicate the volume of river water because we're talking about topsoil. We are not saying that the presence of chlorophyll has compensated for the erosion of topsoil. Those are two different things. And this has not been studied in an effort to further Martin's research, right? This is something that is happening naturally. And so this natural experiment has been giving some idea about phytoplankton growth due to topsoil erosion. So D. Okay, let's grade this. 43. B, A, D, A, triple B. B, A, D, 
A, B, 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 50, C, double D, C, D, D. Okay, great. We got all correct. 